Hi everyone. This is a bit of an unusual video for me in that I'm actually going to read out a blog post that's on my website. I'm going to link the, the blog post down below if you'd like to read it as well um, or prefer to read it rather than continue watching. But the just you know the gist of this video is that I'm dropping the term Shaktipat and going forward we'll be using um, divine light transmission. And I go into all the reasons for that in the blog post and also will do in this video. Um, but I'm aware there'll be some questions and judgments that come up around that, um, which is why I'm doing this. Uh, so thank you. So the title is Time for Another Change, Divine Light Transmission. Along this journey since I started beyondimagen.com back in early 2016, I've come to several inflection points where I've found myself pivoting or changing directions. I think it's a very natural part of life and of growth, and I always hope to do it with grace, authenticity, transparency, love, and care. While some might find making pivotal changes easy with a blink of an eye, for me the process generally seems to require time and patience while a certain change of direction unfolds. I'm definitely more of a slow and steady kind of gal, apparently. This is one of those points, and I tell you, each time before it happens, I see it happening and feel it deeply in my heart long before any readiness or action takes place on the surface level. But I, I finally feel like the timing is right for this next chapter. To some people, these changes that I've gone through over the years might seem minor or insignificant, like why on earth is she making a song and dance about this? And on one level, they absolutely are. But to me, each time they've represented a big shift in me that has already happened or is in the process of happening. They represent a step forward and a shedding of something old, or stepping up to something that feels inevitable but still trepidatious. They represent coming into a new place, coming into more of myself, more naturalness and joy, more in alignment with where I am in life. Luckily, I'm not afraid of growth and change. It's inevitable and happens frequently or continuously, depending on your view. I'm perfectly happy to own that I, Imogen, the embodied human being that I am, am a complete work in progress. I've always tried to let you all in and share this process as much as possible. After all, this is why I started Beyond Imogen in the first place. So all that being said, going forward, I'll be moving away from the term Shaktipat or Shaktipat Awakening Transmission and using the term Divine Light Transmission or simply Transmission instead. So why the name change? Shaktipat is a Sanskrit word that roughly translates as Shakti, which is primordial, cosmic, or universal energy. It's sometimes referred to as the, the great divine mother in Hinduism. And Pat, the transmission or conferring of spiritual energy. While the literal translation of the word is fairly in alignment to my relationship with the process of giving a transmission, and therefore could be argued this is a case of semantics or choice of wording, I find the actual word Shaktipat carries with it too many assumptions, associations, and dogma that leads to expectations on me or the transmission. And as someone who generally places no limits, expectations, or fixed structures on her interactions and work, this has been a tricky one for me over the years. Shaktipat is also heavily associated with Kundalini awakening, which for many has very particular markers and expected experiences namely the arising of the snake-like Shakti energy from the bottom chakras sequentially up the spine. Whereas the transmission I give is generally experienced from the top down in the body. Now, there have been several accounts for this difference of bottom up versus top down in spiritual books and discourses, both old and new, but I still bump into these confusions and expectations frequently enough. Let me also take a second to point out the obvious elephant in the room here. I'm not Indian. I was, however, brought up around these terminologies thanks to the Transcendental Meditation Movement and other Sanghas and spiritual teachers or communities I've been involved with throughout my life. But being that I work with a majority of non-Sanskrit speakers, these terminologies often require more explanation. Or, on the other side of it, I tend to get pigeonholed easily as to what my views of life, teachings or transmission is because of my occasional use of these terms. Either way, I'm a fan of using my native tongue, English, as much as possible. Why divine light transmission? Let me first qualify what I mean by divine, because I feel it's maybe the stickiest point for some. 
when I talk of divine, I'm not talking about some particular special, higher or other than thing or state. I'm not saying that this transmission by calling it divine is special, higher than or other than you. It's my experience that all of this is divine. I want to encourage you to broaden your perspective and conception of the word divine, to not limit it to the distant, transcendent, or unobtainable realm of the gods. Divine, to me, acknowledges the simple nature of life as that of divine unified consciousness, which is often seemingly mystical to the mind. The ego mind distorts this view. It limits and conceptualizes, grasps and imagines this to be something other than but even that limited mind is divine in its way. This term divine I don't use to create a separation, to create a specialness. I say it to point out that we are this primordial, aconceptual, unified, divine consciousness. We are made of this, all of us, all of life. The divine light transmission as I experience it clears away the distorted mind view, thickets of concepts and beliefs of the ego. It helps to clear away any energetic blocks and traumas in the body that can prevent the direct recognition of your pure nature from being tangibly experienced. I personally am not adding anything to you, giving you anything, and I'm not even the one transmitting. Unless, like me, you've come to recognize and identify me and I as awareness or divine consciousness. Admittedly, this is why generally I have trouble with the word transmission, because the language suggests a transmitting from one person to another personally. It suggests a duality where I see none. But all words are imperfect, so this one will have to do for now. My role in this process is more helping you to energetically open up to the radio antenna that is being fine-tuned and placed or tweaked by me, or rather by life working through me. I step out the way as much as possible. I let myself be a conduit for this process. This translates in action as more of an activation or enlivening of that divine light in you. And in the process, it clears out the veils of personhood and beliefs that stop you from seeing your own nature as that of divine light, of divine love, of unified consciousness. Hence the light bit. It really does shine a light and some will experience it quite literally as pure light filling up the head and down into and through the body. So all this being said, that's why divine light transmission feels like a much better fit for me. It's a description of how I see the process unfolding in plain and simple English. Is there anything changing with the transmission? No. The transmission that I give is the same as it always has been. Having said that, in some ways the transmission is always changing always giving what is needed for the time, what is needed for the person receiving it, even what is needed for me as I give it. So in this respect, it's always changing, and no two transmissions are exactly the same. That's part of the beauty of it. Grace gives you what you need in the form of this divine light transmission. What's the difference between individual or group transmissions and the global transmissions? This is another question I get asked a lot, and so I thought I'd just take the opportunity to answer this question too. The intention behind the global transmissions is one for the peace, happiness, and awakening for all those across the globe, regardless of where they're at, what their beliefs are, or if they're even consciously on the path of spiritual awakening. They don't have to be tuned into the transmission or even aware of it. And as such, the global transmissions are much more of a generalized wash of divine light. It's also for physical Mother Earth herself. In the one-on-one -on -one and group transmissions, I'm working much more specifically with the individual's body and energy, and so it can be much more effective in that way and therefore more powerful. So in conclusion, uh, divine light transmission feels the most aligned and best description of what I offer. I can feel the correctness to make this change right now. Yes, like with the term Shaktipat, there's also room for projection, assumptions, and misunderstandings. But somehow I have to trust that this call in my heart is the right one, no matter how this cookie crumbles. I didn't choose this path of life. It chose me. I still sometimes struggle with it. Anyone who intimately knows me can attest to that. 
But bigger than that, there's a much deeper current of trust, surrender, and true faith in life that carries this through regardless. There comes a point for all of us where we find that which we cannot not do is our way forward. For me, this has been the world of transmissions, the world of connecting with and mentoring or helping others as we walk hand in hand together through this crazy life. I just want to finish off by saying this isn't the end of the conversation for me. It never is. To me, this is all an exploration. I'm not about making claims and sticking to them. I'm more interested in exploring, describing, and experiencing life in each moment. So I ask that you take everything I say as a jumping off point, and as always, mark it against your own experience. In loving service, Imogen.